uh, budding entrepreneurs and uh, Mr. Fish Farms, the successful fish farmers, and the ones who want to come into our fold. Now today I'm going to talk about a very crucial aspect of fish farming, which is have to do with uh, water quality. I know all farmers are interested in one thing. The primary interest of a farmer is to make returns. But returns comes from the fish that you sell. Now it's the flesh of the fish, so the bigger the fish, the bigger the income. I mean, that just follows straight away. Now, but the success, the, the growth of the fish has, is a function of the water quality, apart from the food you give the fish. Now, the water can be hard or soft. We're very lucky in Nigeria. Most of our waters are soft. Only a few selected places have hard water. But the real challenge we have, because most of the folks who are into fish farming are in urban cities. And urban cities, you're all aware of what they call uh, these uh, carbon dioxide emissions, all of these uh, global warming and the rest. Now it's led to so much acidity in the environment. So we have acid rains coming on. And that's sunk into the groundwater. So most of our groundwater have acidic water. Now I just got one of my folks, one of my engineers coming from a, a site in, in Benin, Nigeria, on a project site that is designed to actually fetch the entrepreneur 50 million naira per annum. But then he's not going to take things uh, for granted. He's brought his water for us to be able to go ahead and test the water to see whether it's fit for fish farming or not. Now let's go ahead and then get a sample of the water. Yeah, can I have it? Yeah. From here? Thank you. Now, here is the sample of the water from the farm. And I'm going to do something. I'll get somebody to get a sample of the water for me from our compound, Mr. Fish. I've treated our water with some of these materials. So we're going to see the difference between the water from the farm and then the water that we treated at Mr. Fish. Can I have a, a sample of the water from our, from our place here? Yes. Because here we brought over 100 species of fish, both catfish behind me here and then a host of ornamental fish. So let's now see the difference in the water and what we need to do to get things right. Now this is what they call a pH test kit. A serious farmer will go for what they call a complete test kit. That's a bit expensive, about 400 dollars. But this one is a little bit uh, slightly cheaper because it's just taking a single element, the acidity or the basicity of the water. Best water is between pH 6.5, 6.5 and 8. So we're expecting the color like this to make it look like standard bottle water. Ideal for animals. That's what our body, body is like. And then air is a little bit too alkaline. What anything above six is not convenient for the fish. They just thin out because their bone will be brittle. So let's go and do the test. Let's get ahead and do the test right now. Now we got the, we got the reagent, and I got a bottle here to actually work on the reagent. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put just a sample of the water from the farm. Here. Okay, and then I'm not going to do something now. I'm going to put the reagent. Now let's put seven drops. Wait, but wait from the double side, so we're going to be a little bit thrifty. I'll probably put about four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay. Oh my. Uh, what's this? Now let's look up. Oh, what's the deal here? If we look at this stuff, now what we are supposed to have is this color, pH 7. This is manageable, and a little bit above here is manageable. We're look, looking at this stuff is between, it's about 5, and uh, between close to about, about 5. This is not even 6, it's about 5. And if we put the test completely, we might be going this further. So that means it's about a hundred times more acidity than the required level. This is quite some challenge for us. Now let's do the one for that we have from Mr. Fish and see what happens. Let's see what is the difference. Uh, I hope my whole water is right. <laughs> well, I know it's right. It has been treated already. Okay, let's see. 
Wow, huge difference. Now, if you look at what we got here, is pH about seven and eight. This is real, slightly alkaline water. Fantastic for strong bones for the catfish. My God, this is ideal for human consumption. I mean, human consumption because it gets your bones strong. Arthritis is off. Rheumatism is off. And this is what ideally animals should drink except for a few fishes that are adapted to acidic environment and those are the small small ornamental fish in the catfish business we want a big fish so what do we do now this is really some challenge for farmers so what are advisable to have or build in their farm we call it alkalizer now something to make the water to come back to its to this state to be slightly alkaline or neutral so what do we use for that now here's something we have beside beside me here number one thing we use is seashells you're going to get your 4x4 four four ready and then at night you go to the beach because of uh, tourism if they see you carrying all the shells by your beach i hope you know that's an offense but then you talk to the folks in there and then you get some some shells and then some folks are into poultry sell seashells but then they want it for their for their for their, for their chicken too to make them have strong bones but god help you if you don't have access you can always buy from mr fish now you put them in tropical bags and we lay it so that the water passes through the shells now the shell might weigh about one kg now but in about a year's time it should just be about 100 grams that means instead of leaching out the bones of the cats it's just substituting itself the water substituting itself with this with the shells so which one is better to lose a shell that's just peanuts or to lose fish weight i would rather prefer to lose this than to lose fish weight. Now the second one has to do with this. That's if your water has iron. I, that, that your water has iron, but that's on the video you know, that's what I'm talking to you. Now let's go back to the real, the real stuff we want below here. We call this clean noctilolites. Clean noctilolites. Now what does this do? It's the father of uh, buffering. It buffers the water completely and bring it to pH, pH seven which is the most ideal for fish farming. Now, apart from that, it does the additional work of removing any metallic content inside the water. And that's really good news. So that when there are, when there are challenges in the water, probably somebody dropped the nail inside the water, or somebody dropped, uh, what do you call it? Uh, even spectacles, or just anything metallic at all, coins, just mention it. Once they have in the water, of course, they're going to kill your fish in the next two, three days. So instead of having that happen, when you have your water, you lay this inside the water. Can you just focus on it one more time? You lay this right inside your water. From the overhead tank, you have something that's laid in a, in a box or in a drum or in a big tank. You have it as a layer. The water goes through it before coming out into the... So this is called ion exchange, ion exchange media. So he exchanges his own ion for that of the, the acidity, for his own alkaline stuff. So you end up having nitro. So your fishes are happy and of course you are happy too because big fish means big income big profits so i'll advise you make sure you do your water test before you embark on growing your fish this is mr fish speaking